We're going to do a little stone demo today. You can use these techniques for cobblestones, for stones on walls like this. You can use them for all sorts of things. Uh, I chose to use this uh, column because it also has nice two-point perspective on it. So you can see I kind of drew little guidelines, even though the stones are irregular in this, to help me keep track of my perspective. You can see the point to it and how I did it kind of with the ruler over on the left side. The other one's off the page, but I put a little mark actually on my desk and use that for the other side. So just remember when you're working from perspective, especially when you have a corner coming towards you, you need those two points to kind of line up for each of these cobblestones to head towards. So if they were on a floor, they would be getting shallower, like thinner as they went away from us and probably less defined, right? So we're gonna do the kind of the top half one way and we're gonna do a little bit of a different technique on the bottom in case you're doing different styles. Uh, the top half, we're gonna underpaint some colors. So first off, one whole side of this pillar is cooler toned than the other because it's in not as much light. So I'm going to go ahead and just swipe that whole side with a little bit of a blue that's muted down. Um, it's got a touch of red in it to help kind of null the shadow so it's not so like royal blue, it's a little bit more like shadowy colored, lavendery, periwinkle, muddy. Um, I'm going to use that just real quick underneath the topper of this. I kind of simplified this overall. So I don't have as many steps on my top. I don't have maybe as many exact stones. Uh, we're just doing this for the technique. Thank you. So I like to underpaint some colors to make help differentiate the stones. I like to do that at the beginning. On the bottom, we're going to show you kind of a different way if you want more of a solid color approach. Um, but this is how I would attach this. So with a very thin, very light wash, I'm going to work on our dry bare side that's more towards the light. I'm going to add some warmth to a couple stones, I'm going to add some blue tones to a few stones, some green tones, some red tones, so that each stone has a little bit of a different feeling on the wall. I'm seeing those tones, actually seeing them in the picture, but maybe <laughs> kind of choosing how I place them a little bit differently. Um, but using the tones that are inside the picture, it's like exaggerating them. So if one of them is a more yellow, I'm going to go ahead and just paint it yellow right now. Uh, one of them's a little more blue. I'm going to go ahead and paint blue. We're going to do a unifying wash over all of these layers to help create the more neutral tones that we're seeing there. So if it looks a little hot, a little party colored, that is why. Trying to swatch the colors I'm using up at the top there, but then know that I'm also trying to keep water in them to keep them very translucent for this section. We don't want it to get so dark that it doesn't feel like it's in the light anymore. Now that the shadow sides dried a little bit while I was working on the other side, I'm able to repeat the same process on the shadow side. That blue color that's underneath is just going to help all of these colors feel more cool as it shows through. So my yellows, my reds, I'm using the same colors, but I don't have to worry as much about transparency over here, but I also don't want to make them too heavy. Uh, we are still washing over them, so you can do them with pretty much the same amount of pigment as you did on your right side, or left left side, this is the right side, hey yeah, and um, just allow that kind of blue tone to show through it. Now the sun's sort of blowing out my photo here for a second, but I will certainly fix it. Before we get too far much further okay it does help you see the colors though so i had sort of drawn all these different irregular shapes sort of using some of the guideline and the rhythm of the piece uh, from the reference image you can see that they are all following along those uh, vanishing lines towards the vanishing point uh, so that they all feel parallel to each other none of them is like out of even though they're different sizes they are all going towards the same vanishing point which helps them feel like they're wrapping around the same pillar so before we stop and dry everything, I'm just gonna go ahead and color tone this top piece, which has a nice reddish, deep maroon tone to it. Sort of our local color. So I've gone ahead and blow, used a blow dryer to, to make this all white. Not white, dry, hey. And um, now I'm going to mix the neutral color. I'm gonna mix it for my primaries so that you feel like you are, you know, on the level. You may not have a gray. So blue, the opposite of blue is orange. I am using a more reddish orange and then adding a little bit of extra yellow to it to neutralize it. I want it to be a cool neutral so you can see where I'm mixing it on the paper so that you can see it. Instead of applying it as a solid wash with like a big brush which would kind of make everything feel a little bit flat, 
I am working like kind of dabbing and, and showing it in there. So there might be areas that the brighter colors that are underneath are going to show through because I mixed down my paper instead of in the palette for you to see. Uh, I have to keep remixing it because it dries up. I went ahead and mixed a little bit more of a heavy pigment with a little bit more blue in it for this side. And on this bottom half, you can see where I'm allowing like the texture to show through. So that's sort of the brush movement I'm using. I'm not putting a super, super flat approach to it. Anywhere that it is the, when I first pick it up, it's always going to be the most pigmented. So I sometimes like to use that in the most shadow areas. So I might work right side to left side. Mixing a little bit more of this cool tone, a little more pigment to it, and trying to stick to where that dividing line is. So you can still see that we're working on lighting. And then choosing to use that around some of the edges and corners of some of the stones on our brighter side. There we go. So we've once again dried it. Here we are. You can still see there's a definite lighter side and a darker side. So what we're going to work on mixing now is the deep color to go in between. I'm still using a heavy blue with an orange, but it's leaning much more on the blue and it's very pigmented. You can see on my palette, it's not transparent. I'm using that with a very dry and a tiny point to start outlining, outline, outlining the shadows of the different stones. So it's going to look really dark, really stark right here where I'm putting it down, but remember it's watercolor, so it's gonna dry lighter. I'm letting some hesitation, some uncertainty between them. These are definitely like irregular stones. These are not porcelain tiles. So I like some areas to feel darker, which is deeper or rounder, or it kind of helps to do it with a brush versus a pen at this moment because it helps to create that sense of like irregular edges between the stones. So this is the more painterly approach to it. You can see that they do have a very defined edge to them. There's, you know, some different colors in the stones. They're a little more neutral, a little more bumped up in some areas so that people can kind of see the differences between them. Once this dries, it is going to be fainter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and blow dry this. And then I went ahead and did the right side with some pen and ink techniques. This is something you could do... Um, you could even choose to do this instead of outlining it with the watercolor paint, which is what I've done on that bottom half down there. So that you can see, depending on what style you're going for, you could certainly use a pen instead of that. Well, the last step we just did where we mixed a really dark saturated color and used that to do the stone outlines. You could do it with a pen. You could do it with pen nibs. I'm using a micron for this one. I like to use a little bit of an uncertain line, some scribbles to help also define texture. So on the right hand side, you can see I've done some like stippling inside the stones and a little bit of texturizing. And then on the left hand side, I'm using a pencil to do the same thing just because it can be a little bit lighter. So there's two different approaches there. It all depends on what style you're wanting to go for But you can see that the, um, the pen does give it a nice like texture. It makes it a little more illustration-like if that's something that you're interested in. And it certainly does define them. I still wanted to bump a few of my shadows darker. So I've mixed a heavy blue with a little bit of that orange, very saturated. And I'm doing just a couple of the dividing points between the shadows. So this bottom half is where we just use the neutral colors, right? To, to just do some texturing. And now we've drawn stones over them with ink. Um, so that is another option. If you don't want to underpaint colors, you can certainly just sort of do a very like textured wash where you sort of paint each individual brick and then go around it with your either this outlining technique with the watercolor or with ink and create shapes that are each individual cobblestones and then darkening the shadows in between them. That has a little bit less of a colorful approach. It just depends on what stone you're referencing. So I saw a lot of colors when I looked at this. I like to, to make sure that colors show through. So I did that for the top half, but this little bottom half down here has uh, more of a neutral approach and a, less steps. So that one's just doing textures, just painting individual stones with sort of a modeled wash and then outlining them. Uh, you can use a white colored pencil to pop a few of your bright highlights on the edges that are facing. I like to use it a with a little bit of a scribble sometimes so it feels like it's hitting like rocky edges. And now you can see sort of that difference between that top layer and that bottom layer. 
And then you can always, if you choose to do the more solid wash texture approach, you always can go through and tint a couple stones with more yellow or more green, which I just did, added like three of them to be a little warmer, just a tiny amount with a translucent wash, just to help set them off. Uh, on stone pillars, things like this, the edge, the silhouette of it becomes really important. So on this side, that would be kind of disappearing into darkness. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a wash on it. But on the other side, I would outline it with a pencil or um, just make sure that it has a very defined edge because how the stone fits into the world and like where it stops gives a lot of information. So here you can see our finished product. The right hand side has the ink on it, has those darker shadows, is cooler toned to show the lighting. Um, you can see some of how that stippling creates texture for the stones. Those hesitation lines, that little skipping line helps a lot. And on the left hand side it's more painterly, it's brighter, it's a little bit lighter, and we're defined more by those deep dark shadows in between the corners of the stones. I hope that that helps.